everybody, Lotter for Life here, bringing guys a brand new video. Uh, so, <laughs> wow, okay, I wasn't expecting to get more Evil Hero news so soon, and I, I, I know I typically usually wait until we get everything revealed for an archetype before I talk about it, but I'm so hyped for this stuff, I want to talk a bit about it now, and also we got a bunch of other cards I want to cover too, so... <clears throat> evil hero adjuster uh, sorry a duster gold so this is an evil hero version of e of elemental hero captain gold which means they're doing exactly what i've been wanting them to do for like ever and that's remaking the original heroes as evil heroes because that was the original idea entirely you know if you look at all of the evil hero fusions barring one uh actually yeah two maybe i guess and uh, two of the main deck monsters. All of the evil heroes, other than those guys, are based off of the original heroes. You know, Infernal Wing is supposed to be like Flying Wingman, so on and so forth. So doing this, it's so cool, and this artwork looks so cool. I mean, Captain Gold was already like one of the coolest looking elemental heroes, and they just made him look even cooler like this. So this, as I said, evil hero, a Duster Gold. He's a Light Fiend, not many of those you see. Level 4, 2100 attack, 800 defense, same stats as the original uh, uh, Captain Gold. His first effect, and you can only do this once per turn, you can discard this card, add one Dark Fusion or one card that specifically lists Dark Fusion in its text from your deck to your hand, except a copy of himself. And then he cannot attack unless you control a Fusion Monster, which is a reference to how uh, Captain Gold would kill himself if you didn't have Hero City. So, and also, of course, his first effect is a reference to how... Uh, Captain Gold would search out Hero City. So, th th this is so, 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 so good. One of the biggest issues with Evil Heroes forever is that there is no way to search out Dark Fusion or Dark Calling. This card fixes that. You can search out Dark Calling, Dark Fusion, whichever. He's searchable off of Stratos and uh, uh, Shadow Mist. So you can get him to your hand rather easily. I wish he was a warrior. I, I really wish the main deck ones would be warriors. Because then you could use Rota and stuff. But oh well. I'll take what I can get. And also of course. Specifically this Dark Fusion in the text. It's so interesting. Because that means that we might be getting more cards. That pretend to be Dark Fusion. Or that search out Dark Fusion. Or do something that says Dark Fusion in the text or something. It's going to be interesting to see what Konami does with this. Because it, it's going to be... They can really open the floodgates for being able to search out a lot of stuff. This card is awesome. I can't wait to see the other cards. I'm still hoping that like uh, Sparkman, Bubble Man... Well, maybe not Bubble Man. But Sparkman, Clayman, Bristinadrix, and Avion can get retrains. Because... Honestly, they need it like the most. Uh, the fact that the majority of the evil hero fusions need them and they are garbage. I mean, they've got them better to be used as of late thanks to stuff like uh, Unexpected Die and Rescue Rabbit and everything. But you don't want to play a bunch of normal bricks. I want to play cards to pretend to beat them and give uh, like bonus effects or something. Or do stuff like this. Because this is awesome. This is how you retrain a card for a new archetype, Konami. This is awesome i love it it's great awesome artwork awesome effect awesome everything also a bunch of people were confused about uh exactly what earthbound overwalker would be supporting for or at least what we would be getting for that it appears that it's gonna be focused on rex goodwin's uh deck which means it could be focused on condor uh i don't remember his exact name you know the, the earthbound immortal that's the condor that's like supposed to be the strongest but was made the weakest in real life uh so it might be focusing on that or they might be focusing more on the inti and quilla um you know the sun and moon dragon uh kind of thing which is obviously hinted at with overwalker's effect where he needs a synchro in the field and synchro on the graveyard in the graveyard uh because uh, of course you will usually have sun dragon or moon dragon on one or the other so that's pretty cool i kind of hope that they lean more towards this because i've always liked that play style but if they do focus on the earthbound strategy which i think they probably will because again everything's focused on the dark part it'll be interesting especially if they can somehow make the two work together so then, now then, we got a new Tenry Synchro, as well as also a Tuner for the deck. Or, well, not a Tuner, but a card that makes it to where you can get to the Tuner a bit easier. So Tenry, a Tenry, 
Uh, I know, I, th I think I talked about them. Yeah, I did. Originally, I wasn't going to, but people asked, so yeah, I did it. So, <clears throat> it looks like they're going to be uh, more of a focus, of course, continuing on in Chaos Impact. We got a new generic level 8 Dark Worm Synchro for them to deck. Uh, again, generic, so you can use this in anything. And people are already kind of hyping it up because this thing is pretty nutty. So you can only use each of its first. You can only use each of its effects once per turn. And the first effect is when your opponent activates a monster effect. As a quick effect, you can banish that monster. It doesn't negate, but it does banish it. It's very much similar to uh, the zombie boss monster from a recent structure. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Baldurak. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so, very similar to Bottle Rock there, where it doesn't negate, but it does banish that monster. Uh, of course, Bottle Rock will let you banish any monster, not just it, but, uh, you know, you know what I mean. Th this is really, really, really mean. You know, because that can screw over your opponent's plays, that can screw over uh, what they have in their hand, what they're setting up for their graveyard, so on and so forth. Uh, I really wish it would negate and banish, but uh, I guess that would be a bit too powerful for a generic synchro. <laughs> That's a level 8, you know, one of the easiest levels to get into. Uh, second effect, if this attacking card destroys an effect monster by battle and sends it to graveyard, this card gains attack equal to destroyed monster's original attack. Also, can make a second attack on a monster during this battle phase. Yeah, he basically is a Boral Sword in that sense where he gains attack and just relentlessly can keep attacking. Uh, now, that being said, uh, very interesting to note, the attack gain is permanent. So, if you, for some reason, aren't able to kill your opponent there, he will just keep getting stronger. So, very, very good card. Very, very uh, interesting that the deck got a Synchro. I really wasn't expecting this. It really looked like they were focusing on the Link plays. But, yeah, very, very good card. Awesome artwork, too. I love it. Uh, moving on to the new Tenley Dragon. This is the light one. Uh, ten ten ye dragon Ajna Anja, I think I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, apparently it's representing the third chakra eye, um, which is pretty cool. And of course the artwork looks awesome as well. I love all the artworks for the ten wees. They all look so cool. Uh, sorry, it's early morning and I'm I can't wake up. <laughs> so Ajna, it's a light worm, level seven, 1600 attack, 2600 defense. So it's got the right level. I believe the tuner is a level 1. I can't remember off the top of my head though. Uh, 1600 attack, 2600 defense. If you control no effect monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. And then if you uh, have this card, uh, sorry, if you control a face up non effect monster, you manage this card from your hand or graveyard. You cannot special summon monsters for us as turn except for war monsters. Also, special summon a 10 Wii monster from your deck except for a copy of itself. So this is really, really, really good. Uh, just, you know. I, I don't explain I don't have to explain why it's so good it can plop itself on the field and then oh you can also just summon a free dude from the deck it's basically a lone fire for the deck I love it very very good card something the deck kind of needed I believe uh, speaking of something that the deck needed this is not something that rockets needed but I'll take it nonetheless I'm happy so rockets we got some more look at the uh, structure deck this is Silver Rocket Dragon. It's a 1900 attacker, 100 defense, dark, level 4 uh, dragon, obviously. Uh, so, when a Link Monster's effect is, sorry, effect is activated targeting this card on the field, you quick effect, you can destroy this card, then look at your opponent's extract and banish one of those cards. During the end phase, he summons another rocket. Very simple. So, okay. Why did the deck get this? Okay, so I'm not complaining that like I can look at my opponent's extra deck, get some free idea of what they're doing, banish key cards like boss monsters or combo extenders and stuff. But what I am complaining is that this is not what the deck needed at all, like in all honesty. Rockets have enough disruption. They don't really care too much. What they need is a starter or an extender, and this does neither. Uh, so... I'm not very, very keen on this card. It's a nice card. It's very nice to have. Of course, I'm going to probably play two or three in the deck just so I can get rid of stuff in my opponent's extra deck and maybe finally stop playing Anesthetic Rocket. But uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a really big I don't know. I really wish we would have gotten an extender or, or a starter. But eh. Moving on, we got Seraphim Papillon. Now this... And this has got me excited. So, if you don't know what Papillons are, they are a part of, well, technically two archetypes. 
the Papillons and the Butter Spies. They're two archetypes that are made to work together. If I can get Wideo Pro to work, I can show you guys. Come on. Come on. Oh, for the love of. Oh, well. So, Papillons was a Zexal archetype. Uh, that was made to coincide with the Butter Spice. Papillons themselves only have like two or three cards, while Butter Spice make up the core of the deck, and Papillons, of course, uh, act, act as a way to facilitate what the Butter Spice do. Uh, ah, there we go. Cool. So, Papillon. There we go. So, yeah, okay, so they have three cards. Moonlit, Papillon. When this card is sent from the field of graveyard, you can summon a level four lower butter spy from your deck. Knight Papal Operative, uh, just a beater. And then Photon Papal Operative, who everybody who played during wind-up format remembers this card with a passion. <laughs> and then, of course, Butter Spy. Now, Butter Spy, unfortunately, never got much support. I mean, look at this. Three main deck monsters... One extra deck monster, not counting the Papa Operative monsters, and then one trap. Uh, again, this deck did not get much love from Konami. It was, but sucks too, because it was played by like one of the honestly coolest looking uh, female characters in uh, Zexel. Dextra was her name. I always loved her design. She just looked so cool, and her duels were always really cool too. The deck is missing over half of its stuff from the anime, and. It's in dire need of support. The, the deck is super weird. It's focused on, like, losing attack and switching to defense and stuff. And, of course, the only thing that people remember it for is Blue Mountain Butter Spy being a darn good monster. So, uh, the fact that we're getting another Papillon makes me really excited to see if Konami is going to give this deck the uh, treatment that they've been doing for older archetypes as of late. So, this is Seraphim Papillon. It's a Wind Insect Link. Attack 2100, link 3, uh, put points top, uh, bottom left, bottom right. Beautiful card art. Like, oh my god, it looks like Mothra or something. Uh, you can only use each, its first and third effects once per turn and only once that turn. Oh, you can only use one of the first and third effects of this stuff card's name once per turn and only once that turn. So you can, I believe, you can only do one or the other. You can't do both, but eh. So... First effect, if this card is linked, summoned, place counters on it equal to the number of insect monsters used as material. Okay. Gains 200 attack for each counter on this card. So upwards of 600, I believe. So that can make it a 27 or beater. That's pretty nice. Quick effect, you can remove a counter from this card. Special summon one level four lower insect monster from your graveyard in defense position. So it really is basically just a combo enabler. But, however, due to the wording on its effect, which I believe is how it's worded, is from what I've been told by people, is that uh, you can't do the first and, and third effect in the same turn. So, if you use the first effect and place counters on it, you can't remove those counters until your opponent's turn. Which is a bit annoying, but I can see why Konami did that. They're trying to inhibit the... They, they basically don't want another Summon Sorceress Needle Fiber instance, and I can understand that. The only thing is that this is an insect archetype for the most part. Yeah, the uh, Butter Spies are warriors, and the Papillons are the insect part. But, however, uh, they're, they're just one little thing. Insects don't really have much going for them, you know? I mean, other than Insectors, can you name a part, can you name like a really, really good insect deck? And heck, even then, Insectors haven't been good in years. Uh, you know, and heck, as much as I like crawlers, crawlers are not good. Uh, so I don't really think that this would be a too big of an if issue if uh, this card, if you could do this effect during your turn on its summon. But then again, we also don't know what else they're getting in the deck, in the set. So it'll be interesting to see what else is there. Oh, and we got some more some uh, some more news. Uh, Legacy of the Duelist promo cards. Oh no. Oh no, they did not. So, wow, they are just rubbing it in that we are not getting that structure deck. Wow, Konami. Uh, so, we got Proglio, uh, who was a recently announced V-Jump promo. Microcoder, who, if I remember right... Actually, wait, I think Microcoder wasn't in the structure deck, wasn't it? I can't remember. But I believe Synac Codec was, for a fact, in that structure deck. So... Oh, that is that is mean, Konami. Why don't you just give us the freaking cyber structure deck that actually makes like standard cybers that is not Salmon Great somewhat decent, Konami? Please, 
Oh my god, they're gonna freaking pull a structure deck, Master of Pendulum, whatever the hell that was called. The, the, you know, the Zark Pendulum deck. Oh god. <clears throat> so this is arguably even worse since you gotta buy a video game, which means if you wanna get all three, you gotta... You gotta, you gotta buy the game three times or try and get them off of people who don't want it, which means these are gonna be expensive promos because they make cybers good. <laughs> God dang it, Konami. Oh, well, <clears throat> I can't, uh, I can't rant about it. I'm too tired. So, guys, thank you for watching. Have a great day. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. See you all later. Peace out. What do you guys think of all these videos? What do you think, guys, think about all these new cards? And, uh, hey, if you liked the video, please like the video and, you know, click the like button. And, hey, consider subscribing. I agree. It goes a long way to helping me out, and it's greatly appreciated. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Peace out.